In today's video, we are going to be going over a pricing calculator that'll help you to determine to determine what you should be charging for your wedding or portrait photography. My name is Ben Hartley. I help photographers get more inquiries and maximize their profits. If you like this pricing calculator, there is a link in a bio where you can get free access to it. Uh, and so make sure that you do that. Please like and subscribe to this video. Enjoy. So I've got a pricing calculator and I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to go through my pricing calculator with you guys. Um, but, but what charging what you're worth does not mean, it does not mean, well, I've got a mortgage of $2,000 a month and I got these three little kids and they keep eating all my damn food. And so my grocery bills, you know, they're like $400 a month. And then on top of that, uh, you know, I've got this studio here. I got this office and that's another thousand dollars a month. And well, I just, I really, you know, I got this car that I got this loan for. So I got this car that I got to pay off. And, and, you know, I really would like to take, you know, I'd like to take a vacation. I'd like to get these kids out to Disney world because 2020 has just been a hell of a year. And, and so I've got all these expenses. And so a lot of times we look at our life and we look at our expenses and we're like, well, this is what my life's worth. This is what like I need to charge. That's what's charging what I'm worth. This is my cost of doing business and my cost of, you know, like living. And so I'm just going to charge based off of that. And um, the reason that's not really too helpful to, in terms of like to start charging there is just from an economic standpoint. It's like just because your expenses equal X doesn't mean anyone should pay you X. It's like, well, do they even value it that much? Or are you saying that if like you get a new car that you should now start charging more? It's like, well, so I should pay you more because you're living a life that has bigger expenses. And so charging what we're worth gets really, um, it just doesn't really work out from an economic standpoint. It doesn't work out from a value standpoint, meaning your life expenses, your cost of doing business, that might not, um, actually be what people um, consider you worth paying, right? Like like your expenses, your cost of doing business might outweigh the value that you're delivering to people. And so sure, you can charge what you're worth, you can charge your cost of doing business, but if the value isn't there, no one's gonna pay you anything. And so when I say this is a pricing calculator that we're gonna kind of go over today, what I really wanna emphasize is it's less of a pricing calculator and that this is going to be more of a way to check your current lifestyle against what your business is bringing in. A lot of times we have a lifestyle. We've got mortgages and we got restaurants that we eat out at and we've got big dreams. We got big lifestyles. And then we want to go full time with our photography or then we want to cut back on the amount of events that we're going to photograph or or whatever it is. And this calculator that I'm going to share with you guys, the, I'm going to screen share it here will really help you to get honest. Like maybe you're working a full-time job right now and you're wanting to quit and go full-time with photography. Maybe you've got a day job, a nine to five, and you're wanting to go full-time into boudoir. This pricing calculator will help you to understand what that would require for you to do that. Like how much would you have to charge and, and how many events would you have to photograph? How many boudoir sessions? Maybe how many boudoir sessions and weddings, that kind of stuff. Oh, in order to... to um, to support your lifestyle. Okay. Now the response after looking at this pricing calculator isn't, well, you should pay me this amount because this is what my expenses are. But the, re the response may be, oh, fuck me. I need to dial back my lifestyle. <laughs> that may be the current response, but now you've got goals to hit in order to, to move that lifestyle back up. Right? So I just, I guess I want to give that caveat because a lot of times um, people s think that their cost of doing business means that they're worth charging that amount. And the, <laughs> that those, those aren't like, that, that's not the same energy. Those two things aren't equal. Okay. Um, but through this calculator, we're going to be able to get clear about if I were to replace my business, if I were to replace my income with photography, how much would I need to charge? How many events would I need to do? And, and to really look at those numbers and to get honest about it. Now, the, uh, so I'm going to hop over here. I'm going to share this. Uh, I'm going to share this pricing calculator here right now with you guys. And so this calculator here, this is a free version of the calculator that I have. 
right here that I'm gonna give you guys access to, but that's not the one I'm gonna to use today. This is a free version for you guys. In my book solid course, I have a, an advanced version of the calculator that is gonna get into a, a bit more depth uh, to these answers. And this is what I'm gonna to use to, to, to walk through this with you guys today. If you're in Book Solid, you do have access to this. Um, if you're not in the Book Solid course, you don't. However, you will have access to the free one that I'll, I'll make sure to share with you guys, okay? In the Book Solid one, this one's gonna get into a lot more depth and a lot more control with it. All right, so here's what we first need to do. Um, what we first need to do is we have, uh, uh, we've gotta take a look at like, what, well, what is it cost? Like, what are my personal expenses? And as we're looking at our personal expenses, again, listen, you can't, you can't do anything unless you know your numbers. So you gotta take a look at your personal expenses, but I want you to factor out your personal expenses here at only thinking about literally the expenses that it, that it requires to live. Okay, so like this isn't the gym, this isn't Netflix, it's probably internet, because I think it's kind of required, but it's not cable TV. This isn't Starbucks, but this is your groceries. This isn't driving your car across state to go and visit a friend, but it is driving your car to the to the kid's school, to the library, to the grocery store, you know, like those type of things. And so we're gonna calculate your monthly expense. Like what does it cost you to live just like your personal expenses currently? And this is gonna really help us to get honest and clear about your lifestyle choices, okay? Um, and so uh, let's go ahead and we'll take a look at this. So giving, uh, you know, so maybe you give to uh, your church or maybe you give to World Vision or something like that. And so we're going to say like $100 a month I give. I'm just going to make up numbers here for you guys to see. Maybe I've got a mortgage here. Maybe my mortgage is like $2,000 a month. Uh, my utilities, maybe my utilities, I'm, again, I'm, I don't really have a gauge for this. Uh, maybe my utilities a month are like 150 or something. Again, making up numbers here. I'm just going to group that into the all section. Car payment, I don't have a car payment. Um, uh, I do have car insurance though, maybe a month of car insurance. Again, I've got no real gauge for this. I just have it set up on auto pay. I'm going to boot like, we'll say a hundred dollars a month vehicle gas. Let's go ahead and throw in, um, $50 a month. I don't do a ton of driving health insurance, man. That's a doozy, right? Like we need these things. These are all essentials. And so health insurance, I may say something like, a month, like for my whole my whole kit and caboodle, let's say is a thousand dollars. I got kids, I got a wife, you know, all that kind of stuff. And and sure, we've got other things. Anything else we could think of? Maybe a phone line here. That's like another hundred bucks a month. We'll go no credit card debt. Maybe student loans. Maybe I'll just go no. Uh, it, groceries. Groceries are a big thing. Let's go like four four hundred a month with groceries. Again, guys, I'm just making up numbers here. If you're it, it, don't get too caught up on that. And so. Maybe here I'm seeing that my monthly expenses just for living is 5,900, okay? Annually, that's gonna be 70,000, okay? Now, what we're gonna end up taking a look at here is I go off of the 50-20-30 rule. I'm gonna cut over to me right now so you don't get too distracted here. The 50-20-30 rule says, listen, I've gotta make $70,000 a year. That's what that just showed you guys right here. If I go back here to my personal expenses, that just showed me total annual expenses, $70,800, right? Like that's what it requires me and my family to just live on this earth. Not like enjoy it, not set aside retirement. Literally, I'm not even going out to eat with that. That is the bare minimum. The 50, 20, 30 rule is a rule that I like. Some people don't like it because, because it's a it's like it's a rule that's aggressive in that it it forces you to um to like live a life worth living. Like it's um it's a rule that uh it's a rule that um doesn't leave you living paycheck to paycheck, but really leaves you living in a way that I want all of you guys to be living. The 50-20-30 rule suggests that 50%, 50% of your take home, 50% of it is literally just your expenses. So that means if, if following the 50, 20, uh, 30 rule, then that means that this 70,000 is only 50%, 70,800 is only 50% of what I'm going to take home from my photography business. It's only 50% of it. That means that there's another 20% and another 30%. There's a whole other 50, 50% 
of this that's going to be used for other things. And that's called living. That's called like actually having a business that serves you. That's called actually having a business that like profits. And so with the 50, 20, 30 rule, again, it's an aggressive rule, I understand, but it's good to have goals in mind. Maybe right now, uh, so let's go back over to this. The 50, 20, 30 rule, the, the 20% of it right here would be for savings. So that means I'm gonna set aside $28,320 annually for savings okay so that's going to get set aside because listen that may sound like a lot but like that savings that's going to be for like your um for your retirement that savings is maybe going to be for um your emergency fund that savings is going to be for um uh, maybe paying off debt early that savings is going to be for um lining up uh, maybe like uh, uh, your kids, maybe like their 529, like their college account. Um, you know, like you've got your savings here that you should be, um, you should be like investing into, okay? And then there's a 30%. That 30% is discretionary income, okay? So 42,480. We have, by the way, you guys, this right here, yeah, so savings, not business. Yeah, this is just personal life. This isn't even looking at the business yet, okay? So this is not business savings, it's personal savings, okay? So now discretionary income. Discretionary income is like, well, I want to take my kids to Disney. I want to go out to eat. I want to have a gym membership. I want to have Netflix. I think having... Um, uh, uh, Apple Plus to watch Ted Lasso would be pretty great. Um, I also know that my car is going to break down. I'm going to need a new car here, and I'd like to save up for maybe a Tesla. Um, we'd like to also have some discretionary income kind of set aside also for maybe some more aggressive um, investing. Maybe I want to consider looking at investing a little bit more aggressively into a diversified income of crypto and this and that. Maybe I want to actually consider um, uh, looking at like another property, uh, maybe an Airbnb. So like you've got some more aggressive investings, you know, um, some more aggressive, um, retirement planning that you could be doing. I put savings, I put that into like the standard retirement planning, um, index funds, your Roth IRA, that kind of stuff. And again, this is not financial advice, by the way. Um, but like with the discretionary income, maybe that's stuff that's a little bit more aggressive. Maybe it's not a surefire win. Maybe it's maybe it's buying a Bitcoin or two, right? Um, but like, listen, this, this right here, that's aggressive. This is what I want you guys to hear. The 50, 20, 30 rule I mean, this is how I currently live my life. And I got to tell you, it's a really sweet life. It's like when, you, when you're bringing in that much revenue that you can actually enjoy, that you don't have to stress about things. Like we're about to take my kids to Disney here um, in April again. Like that's it's a really great goal to move towards. But now, again, maybe... The 50, 20, 30 rule is too aggressive. Maybe a few, it's not really realistic. And so maybe instead it's like, okay, 50% personal expenses, but I can adjust this and I could say, well, maybe I'm going to do the 50, 10, 10 rule, <laughs> right? So the 50, 10, 10 rule, it's going to, it's going to adjust these automatically. So it's going to say, Hey, you still got your personal expenses to live, but now your savings is going to be 14,000 and your discretionary income is going to be 14,000. Okay. Um, maybe that's even aggressive for you. Maybe you're like, man, Ben, that sounds really great. I'm just not there yet. So this, again, this is, um, inside of the book solid course, I do have a free version for you guys to kind of give that, that it, it's, it's simplified. Um, but, uh, but okay. So I just want to kind of show you guys the calculations here that are going on. I'm going to go back to the 50, 20, 30 rule. Cause I'm creating a business that allows me to design my own life. All right. So now, uh, the 50, 20, 30 rule, that's now saying that my take home salary, take home salary, you guys, Take home. Now, this is like, this is after taxes. I want that baby to be $141,000, $141,000, okay? Well, uh, estimated uh, tax bracket, maybe, I mean, you've just got to look at who's president, what's going on. Maybe that's 30% now. Maybe that's lower. Maybe it's higher. You can change out this number in my calculator here. We'll just keep it at 30% here. That's now going to say that I'm going to have an estimated taxes. Again, this has nothing to do with business yet. This is just your personal goals of 60000 My target total salary is now 202000 That's what I want to be taking home. Okay. 
to, or that's what I want to be bringing in for my salary, target total salary. Okay. Now, again, that's literally just looking at the personal goals right now. Like that's just that. And again, I'm going to reemphasize this. The 50, 20, 30 rule is an aggressive rule for building a business that allows you to design the life that you want to live. So that way in five, 10, 20 years, you're not panicking over paycheck to paycheck. That means that when 40 years hits and you want to go and retire, you've actually created investments for yourself. You've actually set up a retirement. That means that you actually have health insurance. Okay. So like the 50, 20, 30 rule is something that again, uh, you might not start out with it. You might start out with right now, if you're looking to quit your day job, a 50, 10, 10 rule. Okay. So now let's, that's just looking at the personal. Now let's go over to business. Okay. Let's go over to the business expenses. So the business expenses is now this is where we're going to take a look at, well, how much do I uh, pay annually for marketing? And I broke it down. You could do it all together here, or you could do Facebook ads and not networking, SEO, all that kind of stuff. Let's go ahead and hypothetically say that in a given year, my marketing budget is like $4,000. Again, making up numbers. Okay. So don't get too caught up in this. Maybe my studio rent is another $1,000. Maybe I've got some random office supplies and the random office supplies that I have is like, well, I've got to pay for like tissues and candles for clients and like um, maybe some pens, that kind of stuff. So maybe like annually, it's like 50 bucks a year or something. Okay. Um, website hosting, you know, I've got to pay for that. Maybe that's $25 or uh, maybe it's like $100 a year. Again, I'm just making stuff up. Subscriptions to like show it. Maybe that's another like 100 bucks. So, uh, office stuff on, I don't have that. Everything just goes through my personal line. File delivery, this would be like shoot proof, show it, um, not show it, shoot proof, um, pixie set. Uh, what are the other ones <laughs> that exist? Pass, right? So, um, okay, yeah, so file delivery system, maybe annually, what are those normally, like 30 bucks a month, 30 times 12, let's just, I'm just gonna say 300. Um, business insurance, this would be like liability insurance, um, equipment insurance, you know, maybe, maybe that's, uh, maybe that's a grand, maybe you got a lot of equipment. Um, okay, good. So now equipment, maybe you budget like $3,000 for equipment. My advice is when you're looking at your equipment and your education spend, that your education spend should bare minimum equal your equipment spend, if not more. You guys, a new camera is not going to make you more money. Fuck, listen to me. A new camera is not going to make you more money. It won't. <laughs> Just tell you it's not gonna make you more money. But when you invest in yourself, don't you don't have to invest with me, by the way. When you invest in yourself, when you buy books, when you buy courses, when you buy mentoring, when you buy coaching, when you go to a workshop, when you go to a conference, that will make you more money. Make sure that your education investment is at least the same as your equipment. I'm gonna make this baby five thousand annually. Okay. Uh, accounting, bookkeeping, all that kind of stuff. Calendly, I just, I put in a whole bunch of things here, right? Um, okay, sweet. So let's just go ahead and we'll leave it at that. All right, I, I'm skipping a bunch of stuff here. So my total annual expenses for the business is 14,550. Broken down monthly is 1,212. Okay. Now this right here, this number is not factoring in the cost of goods sold. This is your overhead. That means that no matter what happens, if I don't book anybody, if I don't book anybody, the overhead for my business, what I'm on the line for annually is $14,550. That's my overhead. That's getting burned no matter what happens. If I book zero people, I'm burning 14,550 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Now, that's different than our cost of goods sold. With our cost of goods sold, listen, that's just when people actually buy from us. This is great. When you actually incur cost of goods sold expenses, that means that someone paid you money. <laughs> so we have to calculate them, but we're going to calculate them differently. And so you, when you do this, you, you're, you're going to have to, at least with this calculator, average out like the, when someone buys from you, average out what that, um, what those costs of goods sold are. And it's going to, it's going to vary depending on the collection that they purchase again. So we're just gonna look at the averages. And so maybe the average album that you, a client buys is going to cost you $150. All right. Maybe the average wall art that a client buys is going to cost you $200. Um, maybe your second shooter on average is going to cost you $400. If you have a second shooter, maybe your editing on average is going to cost you like $150 per event that gets edited. Maybe the gifts that you get your clients on average is going to cost you $200. Again, 
I'm making this up right now. Don't get too caught up on these numbers. All right. Um, and so now my total cost every time I book a photo session is $1,100. That's the, ex that's like the cost. When someone books me for this imaginary session that I just made up, it's going to cost me hypothetically $1,100. This would probably be more like for a wedding. You know what I mean? Like if you're doing like a full print, uh, a full collection for wedding photography, right? Cause I've got a second shooter in here. That's cost me $400. If you're doing portraiture, you're not going to have that. Right. Um, Okay, cool. You guys tracking so far? All right, let me go ahead and pause on this for a hot second. And now we're gonna go back over to this completed section here and we're gonna take a look now at the total, the total kind of everything here, looking at the personal expenses and these business expenses, okay? Let me hop over here, see what you guys are saying here. Uh, okay, good. <laughs> this is bullshit. My R6 went outside and maybe five grand while I was inside watching football. <laughs> Okay, good. Someone says 100% agree. Good equipment is good, but good education, aka Benz, appreciate that, is 10x better. Okay, good. Yeah, it won't. Tell them. Yeah, I know, but we want this shiny new things. I know. I get it, by the way. I Just so you know, I totally get it. Um, okay, I'm just dead that I went to my accountant and financial advisor trying to find calculators like this, and Ben had it in the course I bought like four months ago. Yeah, this is in Book Solid. This is there for you guys in Book Solid. Again, if you're just joining right now, this uh, this pricing calculator that I'm going for or going through is inside of the Book Solid course. I'm going to share with you guys a free version that's a simplified version. It doesn't give you as much control, but it'll kind of get your foot in the door to look at some things I'll share with you. Uh, I'll share that with you in a minute. Okay, so let's keep going now. So... We've got our personal expenses, a quick review, a 50, 20, 30 rule. These are all the personal expenses, the taxes that we're going to be paying off those. Notice how we didn't, we're not paying taxes on the business expenses. These are tax uh, write offable. And again, I'm going to simplify things. Uh, you've got to talk to your own CPA to figure out how much is, how much of it you're able to write off. You know, if you've got like drinks and meals in here for cost of goods sold, maybe that's not 100% write offable. However, Listen closely. It is for this year, 2021. You get 100% of your client meals uh, and drinks um, are 100% write offable this year because the government is trying to push uh, small businesses to go and take your clients out to, to eat. They're trying to support small businesses with greater tax incentives, and they're trying to support the restaurant industries by getting more people out. And so 2021, and I believe 2022, are 100% write offable to all your client meals. So actually, quick little pro tip, I'm not a CPA, but when you go out to eat, try to talk about business. <laughs> Try to talk about business when you go out to eat and you save that receipt. All right, babe? Okay, cool. <laughs> I am not a CPA. This is not professional advice. Okay, so now let's go back into this here. Um, so now let's take a look. My cost of goods sold every time I book a client for a wedding, we'll say, is $1,100. My business expenses monthly, I'm here in the blue box, my business expenses monthly is uh, $1,212 annual expenses, the overhead. Okay. Combined with the personal expenses right here. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little wild. We are going to plug in in this. I'm moving this little slideshow around. I want to factor in my target number of main events annually, right? So like when I say my main events, maybe I'm a portrait photographer. And so maybe family sessions are my main event, right? Does that make sense? So this calculator can be used for portrait photography. It can be used for wedding photography. So maybe I, I'm a portrait photographer and I want to be doing 50 sessions annually. All right. Now there's this other section here, additional photography sessions, but, but maybe I also do like five weddings on the side just cause I like shooting weddings every now and then. And so maybe I do five weddings on the side. I'm going to change the red numbers five and maybe typically for a wedding because it's not my main thing. Typically a wedding, maybe I, I profit $3,000 a wedding. Okay. So it allows for you to factor in like your main events, uh, and then your, like your side, you know, like your little side chick over here. So uh, I'm going to do this for weddings though. So maybe I only want to photograph 15 weddings a year and I don't do any portraits or anything. So I'm going to just put this at zero. Okay. Cause I don't really do any portraits. I'm not making any money with that. Um, so I want to photograph 15 weddings. Okay. Very good. Let's go through this. All right. So the combined totals business expenses plus my total target salary. That means, uh, 
uh, overall, I want to be bringing in with my business expenses and my personal life $216,000. This green box, everybody skips because no one is thinking about the profit of their business. All right. This profit of your business is something that you should be thinking about. I'm going to cut back to me real quick. Right now, again, I'm just like, I'm just living my life. I'm, I'm creating, I'm, uh, I'm looking at my personal expenses. I'm looking at the 2030 rule to consider my own personal savings and my own personal discretionary income. Uh, I then I'm looking at my business expenses. But the thing that I haven't considered is what does it look like for my business to actually be building value? What does it look like for my business to be profiting? Meaning not just like bleeding out all of the money to me personally. Okay, but for my business to be setting aside a profit. Now, the reason that you'd want to be setting aside a profit for your business, there's really three main reasons. Number one is, um, so your business actually has value. Like, so that way, maybe someday, if you wanted to sell your business, that it would be uh, like accumulating a, a profit every year that you could point to and say, this business is worth something. It's actually creating profit you should buy it from me. So that may be one reason. The second reason is for innovation. When you actually have a set aside profit for your business that allows you as the business owner to innovate the company, that means, well, maybe you could use some of that profit to go hire on an office manager. Or maybe you could use some of that profit to invest into diversifying and setting up a sister brand for your associate model. Or maybe you could use that profit of the business to open up a new branch for your lifetime photographer, where after the wedding, you go on to photograph um, maternity, newborn, and then family portraits, okay? And so with the business's profit, it allows you to innovate. That would be a brilliant thing, right? Um, and then, um, Oh, I had a, I had another reason, but I I, I just it just whew, fairy dust just disappeared from me. Okay, um, and so what I want to share with you guys is this is where you can can actually consider what you want your business to be profiting. Now, I started off with a pretty low projection here at three percent. You can go ahead and you can go in there and you can change that. Maybe that's still aggressive for you. Maybe you you uh, you're just be lucky to profit the business at like one percent, which would be setting aside two thousand dollars, right? Maybe you you get down the the area. Which, by the way, I really recommend that you be increasing your profit annually. So each year your business profits further and further and further. So maybe that's only you increase at one percent. Okay, to start, and so maybe year one you're at five, uh, you're at five percent profit, and then you look at next year and you start looking to hit some new goals where you're gonna you're gonna go to like six percent profit. Okay, now let's keep going. Extra income. This is a great question. This is like, well, Ben, you didn't factor in my wife's salary here. Like, yeah, I've got all these personal expenses and we, we want to have the 2030 rule for savings and discretionary income, but this is suggesting that the only revenue is coming from photography. So I do have this extra income source. Like my wife, she brings in $70,000 a year, hypothetically, right? Or, well, my husband brings in $50,000 a year. That's a great extra annual source, an extra income source. So you can put this in here and it'll help you to adjust your goals. Notice right here, my gross revenue goal is 196,000. If I take away this additional 50, it's going to go and increase by 50,000. All right. Now, oh, someone's saying it's getting cut off. My bad, my friends, my bad. Here, here we go. Thank you for letting me know that. I apologize. Okay. So this little extra income source is for if you have maybe a second job, maybe you're working a part-time job at Denny's, maybe you're working as a server while you're building your photography uh, business up, you can go ahead and drop in that extra income source annually inside the orange box. Or maybe you've got a partner that's supporting the business and they're providing income. Um, my advice for you is this. My advice for you, my, my married friends, my people in partnerships, is that you try to build your business, your photography business in a way that is independent, that allows you to completely support the life that you want to live, completely independent from any partner's income. Because if there's anything that we've learned, it's that nothing's permanent. It's like, God forbid, what if they lose their job? right? Or what if things happen? Listen, the world's a crazy place. What if things happen and you guys separate? I really want you to have a business that allows you to live the life that you want to live completely independent from anybody else's um, income. Okay. That's just a, re that's a recommendation that I would encourage you to have. And yet this is your life. And so like, um, when you go back over to this, 
you can go ahead and put that extra income source annually here. And again, maybe you're working a part-time job, maybe you're working a second job, maybe you've got a day job, maybe you've got a partner that is supporting, uh, you pool all your resources together, you can put their annual income in there, okay? Now, again, down here, income from additional photography sessions, all right? This little income from additional photography sessions, all that is is it's pulling from this down here. Remember I showed you, uh, hold on, I showed you this, these additional photography sessions. And so like hypothetically, let's say maybe in a given year, I pick up like five portrait gigs and I bring in an extra 1500 for each of those. You will see right here, it's going to give me an additional $7,500 from those from those things okay so now what this allows me to do is it's going to tell me right here my total my like my total overall gross revenue goal that i gotta hit is two hundred thirty eight thousand. okay this little blue question this is the question how much would you need to average or how would how would how would need to average this amount per you would need oh my goodness my brain you would need to average this amount per your main photography event to actually hit that goal. So for if I wanted to only photograph 15 weddings, right here, 15, that means I'm gonna have to average $15,920 a wedding. Again, this was my made up thing, just for you guys to see. And so, well, well, you know, shit, I'm not gonna do that. So that means that I need to look at, maybe I need to photograph 30 weddings a year instead of 15. When I change that to 30, my new goal here is 8,511. Maybe I'm like, well, no, I don't wanna kill myself. I only wanna photograph 15 weddings. That means that I need to bring down my personal expenses. That means I need to change my lifestyle. So maybe I need to, to move and not have a 2,000 a month rent or mortgage and downsize to a 1,000 a month mortgage. And that right there brings this number down to 13,500. Maybe I need to, to get rid of my office. So maybe I go over to my personal expenses and I'm like, well, shoot, I really can't afford my rent. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get rid of my office, you know, whatever it is. I'm just suggesting that when you see this number here, there's other places to adjust. Maybe I need to go pick up a second job that brings in an additional 20,000 a year to bring this down. Uh, again, maybe I need to go and photograph 25 weddings. Maybe there's a nice compromise. If I were to photograph 25 weddings with all these made up numbers, it's gonna tell me the average that I need to be selling my artwork at. The average I need to be hitting is 7,697, okay? seven hundred. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more fun in this little pricing calculator, is down here is my current state this is the current state of my world versus my goals. So this is where I get to get a really honest look at my life. And I get to say, okay, my current average revenue per wedding or per event, and let's say I'm a wedding photographer or a portrait photographer, is $2,500. The number of events that I currently have booked for this year is five. The additional income that I'm getting from other photography gigs is zero. That means my total gross revenue is 12,500. And the difference from this is negative 179,000. Again, this is being really bleak right now, you guys. I'm just trying to show you that this calculator will, will put all this together and it'll allow you to get really honest with your life. Do you need to photograph more events? Do you need to increase the profit per event? Do you need to decrease your lifestyle within your personal choices? Maybe, honestly, again, I was looking at the 50, 20, 30 rule here. Maybe you're just starting out and the 50, 20, 30 rule is once again too aggressive. And maybe you need to consider like a 50, 10, 10 rule right? If I were to do a 50, 10, 10 rule, now I need to make 5,560 a month. Okay. Does that make sense? I'm sorry, not a month, 5,560 per event, per event that I'm booking. Again, just to be clear, these are all made up numbers. The reason that they're all out of whack is because I literally just typed in numbers, but this calculator will show you guys how to do all this. Once you get a good, honest look at your numbers, you can start setting goals. Maybe to start year one, it's a 50-10-10 rule. Maybe year two, it's a 50-20-20 rule. Maybe year three, it's a 50-20-30 rule. You know what I'm saying? Um, but this will really help you guys to get a clear aim. What is the aim? What's the direction you're hitting? And how do you actually hit that goal? Okay. Now, again, for you guys, um, this whole calculator right here is in the um, book solid course. Uh, it's all set up. Everything is, is factored in for how to do all this stuff. Uh, there is a free version of this calculator that is a, a it's a simplified version. Um, and there's actually a couple of things that I'm, I'm updating on it right now. So there, if you go to it right now, it might be, 
It might be broken potentially because I'm changing a couple things on it, um, but there's a free version of it. If you go to sixfigurephotography.com forward slash pricing calculator. Um, let me go ahead and I'm gonna post this into the comments here over on Facebook. Um, it is a free version of it that's not as advanced. It doesn't allow you all the control that the one inside of Book Solid does, and it doesn't have all of the features. However, it's a good one to kind of get you guys started. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna paste this. I'm gonna comment on my own uh, video right now. Oh, I can't for some reason. I'll, I'll, I'll comment after, uh, for some reason, it's not allowing me to comment. Um, yeah, so I'll comment on it once I, I wrap up this video here, okay? Um, so, okay, so let me see what you guys, yeah, so somebody said, that my takeaway, I'm definitely not charging the right amount. Now listen, the takeaway could be you're not charging amount enough. It could be that you need to photograph more events. It could be a combination of those two things. It could also be a combination of um, potentially adjusting your lifestyle until you can move these things up, right? Um, okay. Uh, when does the course open? So, um, uh, Juanita, the course is going to be opening here in April. So Booksolid is going to open back up in April, uh, for you guys. Um, wait, did I miss it? Is the Booksolid course open now? No, it's not yet in April. Um, if you go to benhartley.com for, let me just do that for you guys here. I'll show you. If you just go to, um, benhartley.com, benhartley.com, and then click on book solid course, there'll be a, a little wait list here. Uh, when it opens back up in April, you, you'll be notified, okay? Um, okay, thank you. Yeah, there. here's, somebody just went ahead and they typed it in, six free five com forward slash pricing calculator is the basic version of the, of the pricing calculator. And again, when I say pricing calculator, just remember that this calculator, it cannot tell you that people are willing to pay this. It cannot tell you that this is what you ought to charge for your photography and for your service. But what it can begin to open up for you is an awareness to, oh, wow, I need to be photographing more events, or oh wow, I need to get my pricing up a bit higher, or oh wow, the lifestyle choices that I currently have, I may need to open up my credit card statement and take a look at what monthly expenses can be deleted. Like what do I really need right now? Because maybe this is a period of time where I hunker down a little bit and I really focus in on my education or I focus in on, on the guidance or the mentoring or the coaching, or maybe I focus in on the marketing side of things, right? And so that may mean that you you kind of tighten your belt in other areas of your life. This this pricing calculator will really just help to kind of create an awareness to some of these numbers and then empower you to set your aims, set your goals, and know what you need to be doing, okay? Um, all right, you guys. Yeah, so someone said, is the Book Solid the online course or is that abundance? Book Solid is the online course. It's it's a course on how to win more inquiries at higher prices, okay? Abundance is an in-person workshop here at the studio. Uh, the next one is going to be April 18th, okay? Uh, it's an in-person workshop, four days long, uh, really intense. It, they're like 13-hour days. Uh, with a small, very small, tight group of photographers. There'll probably be around like 10 photographers here in April, okay? Um, okay, yeah, Book Solid, yeah, people are saying, yeah, you have the same question, wonder that too. Um, oh yeah, how much did you budget? So Book Solid is $2,300, okay? Uh, it does have a full year, by the way, this isn't a pitch on that. Uh, I, that that's not my aim here, but you asked the question, so I'll answer it. It's $2,300, there's a full 12 month uh, payment plan, okay? Um, I guess someone said I've been on the wait list for months. Okay. Yeah. 2,300. Yep. There's a 12 month payment plan. Okay. All right, you guys. Um, wait, thanks for hanging out with me today. Uh, appreciate it again. If you want the, the, uh, this version of it here, um, wait, not that six figure photography.com forward slash pricing da uh, a little dash calculator um, is the free version. I'm updating a couple things here, but I'll just kind of walk you through it real quick. It's gonna ask you again to calculate your personal expenses. It's then going to estimate your tax bracket. It's just gonna estimate it, okay? It's not like guaranteed. Um, it's then gonna give you a breakdown using the 50, 20, 30 rule. Um, and then you're gonna put in your business expenses, you're gonna put in your cost of goods sold, and then you click on this button here, and it is going to show you, you know, how much you should be charging. It, it, it's it's a simplified version of what I just went over, and it does not allow you to customize things, and it doesn't allow you to keep all that the data here, like what's what you would have here instead of Book Solid, okay? Um, and, okay, cool. 
Well, there you go, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate it. I hope that this gives you, uh, again, numbers Numbers are frustrating. Uh, maybe they can be, um, but they're also really empowering. When, when you push through the anxiety, when you push through the fear of looking at these things in the eye, when you push through that and you get a really clear view of it, it really empowers you and it, and it shows you what you need to be doing next. And, and I'm also here to say that this is all possible. This is all so very possible. I've seen countless photographers live incredible lives, incredible lives, getting to do what they love and getting to like support their families in the most meaningful way ever doing it. And, um, and it's so rewarding to see. It's incredibly rewarding to see. The last thing that I want you guys to hear from me is this before I hang up this live video. The number one thing that you can do for your clients, the number one thing you can do for your clients is make a damn profit in your business. It's the number one thing you can do for your clients. Because if you run a business that runs itself into the ground, you don't have a business and that your clients won't have someone to hire next year. The number one thing you can do for your clients is make an actual profit because with that, again, it allows you to give back to them. It allows you to innovate. It allows you to, to provide more value. It allows you to keep giving them all of the feels and all of the value that, that you so long to give. And if you can't do that, you, you don't have a If you can't profit, you don't have a business. You're going under. The number one thing, the best thing that you can do for your clients is to actually have a business that profits, okay? So no more dogging on yourself. No more feeling shame or guilt about actually making money for your business. Because the only way you can keep showing up for your clients is if you have this thing, all right? Appreciate you guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.